In a few days, I'm going to be releasing my review of this bike, the 2021 Honda Africa Twin 1100 with the DCT. But in that video, I'm not going into the details of the DCT versus the standard transmission. Instead, this video here is dedicated to understanding what the DCT is, how it works, who it's for, who it isn't for, and what are the distinct advantages and distinct disadvantages that the system has. All right, cool. Now that we've kind of told you about DCT, is it something you want to try? No. DCT is something that sets Honda apart. Currently, they're really the only ones in the motorcycle space offering something quite like this. Now, Honda claims that the DCT makes for a better, smoother, more modern riding experience. And in fact, they even equate using a clutch to using a rotary phone. Think you'll miss shifting with a clutch? Ask yourself this. Do you really miss your rotary phone or your manual typewriter? Yeah, we didn't think so. So first, let's talk about what the DCT is not. The DCT is not a band-aid for inexperienced or new riders. And in fact, if you're a new rider, I strongly advise against getting the DCT. And instead, I'd recommend you learn how to ride a normal bike with a clutch first before graduating maybe later on to a bike with the DCT. The reason for that is that 99.9% .9 of bikes on the road are a standard shift with a clutch, and you need to know how to use that. In order to take advantage of the benefits that the DCT offers on something like an adventure bike, you're going to actually need to be a little bit more of an experienced rider. That's a little bit different on the street and in urban environments where the DCT really just has almost all advantages and no disadvantages, but we'll get to that in a second. Another thing the DCT is not is it's not an automatic. It is not like the automatic transmission in your car. There's no torque converter. It's not like a slush box, mushy feeling. It has actual gears in it that you can take manual control over or use one of the automatic shifting modes. The bike has full engine braking because it doesn't go out of the gear until like a torque converter like the transmission on your car does. So don't equate it to that and please don't call it an automatic. So what are the distinct advantages that a DCT has? So the first major advantage is that you cannot stall the bike. So unlike on a clutch where you have to slowly release the clutch and if you're on a hill or in a tricky situation or you don't apply enough power, you can stall the bike in traffic, that never happens with the DCT. What this means for you is that you're going to have less accidents, you're going to have less tip overs, you're going to have less of those little mistakes that um, even those of us who are more experienced still make pretty often. Now would you give it a try? Five minutes and I'll ask. Yeah, why not? I'll give it a try. What about your car? Well, my car is automatic. You... I'm sorry, it's what? Okay, I'll try it. Yes. The second major advantage to the DCT is that it's a smoother ride for both the rider and the passenger. This is especially a benefit for those of you who ride with a passenger because with a normal bike, when you shift between gears, there's this back and forth clunking that happens between all the gear shifts and your helmets bop together and it's just not the most comfortable experience. With the DCT, because the gear shifts are so smooth and so instantaneous, that doesn't happen anymore. The third advantage to the DCT is that in urban environments and stop and go traffic and city traffic, this is a huge advantage because uh, there's, you're not using the clutch all the time. It just is a lot less tiring and allows you to focus more on your lane splitting or what the traffic is doing and dealing with those urban environments. So that's a huge, huge advantage of this. Another huge advantage to the DCT is that you're never going to miss a shift again. So on pretty much every motorcycle I ride, sometimes they have false neutrals or your boot just doesn't catch a shifter right and you get caught between gears or maybe you just can't find neutral. So those types of missed shifts are a thing of the past once you have the DCT. The other advantage of the DCT is that you're getting the best of an automatic and a manual because you have the trigger shifters on the handlebar, which work really, really well. So you can put it in manual mode, uh, or even when you're in automatic mode, you can override using the trigger shifters and you get instantaneous smooth shifting. So you can still control your gears manually. You just don't have a clutch anymore and a foot lever. God, those gear shifts are really smooth. You just can't even feel them. Give it the beans here and see how the DCT responds. So I'm at 3000 RPM, it's in fifth gear, and I'm going to fully open the throttle.
So enough with all the good shiny stuff about how great it is, but what about the downsides? Well, yes, from my experience of having this bike behind me for a month and riding it on road and off road on the trail, there are some downsides to the DCT. So let's cover what those are. The first disadvantage to the DCT, which is something you can overcome by using the manual mode, obviously, is that it cannot read your mind. The motorcycle cannot look ahead and say, oh, there's a, we're going to crest over this hill and make a right turn, or oh, there's traffic coming up, or that's a really tight corner, or that's a faster corner, or whatever it is out there. It can't do that. So it can't anticipate gear changes the way you can of being in a certain gear at a certain time to be ready for the terrain or the curve ahead. It simply can't do that. Now, like I said, you can simply use the manual mode in those situations if you want to work around that. The second disadvantage that I've been finding is that the shift logic in the automatic modes is pretty poor overall. Now again, this is just my opinion and you're free to differ with it and I hope you will offer your differences in the comments. Actually, I know you will because I know you guys on YouTube. But uh, the way that it shifts in some of the modes is really, really strange and not how anybody would shift. So if you use the D mode, you know, we've all talked about this and someone said, oh, well, it's a cliche that you're talking about how bad it is. Well, I have to mention it. I mean, if you use D mode, it's unrideable. It, it lugs the engine so much that it just feels like you're breaking the bike. So never use D mode. So I don't know why it does that. Whoa, okay. Well, that's interesting. Wow, it shifts. So in drive mode, it shifts so much. Like I'm already in fifth gear at 30 miles an hour. It's just lugging along. Boy, that is very, I don't like that at all. When you're in the sport modes, it does better, but it still doesn't quite match how you would shift um, normally. Sport modes two and three do work better. They hold the gears longer. So in sport number three, what it does is it'll hold the gear more. See how it's not. Yeah, sport number three is pretty aggressive. The other thing is, is that when it's an automatic mode, it's not quite as quick to react as you would like. So let's say you're in drive mode or sport mode one, two, or three, it doesn't really matter, and you grab a whole bunch of throttle right away, like to pass a car. There's a bit of a delay before it says, oh, he needs power. He wants me to downshift. Uh, there's too much of a delay there. I wish it was more fast. You know, I've driven uh, cars that have dual clutch transmissions and even some of the more modern slush box automatic with torque converters, and they shift faster than this DCT does. So I don't know what's with that delay. Maybe it's a safety thing, but I wish it would downshift faster when you grabbed a handful of throttle. The third disadvantage, and for me, I think this is the biggest one, is that if you're choosing to use the automatic modes to enjoy some of the advantages of the automatic modes and not having to shift, what happens is, it will upshift at the worst possible times because again, it can't read your mind and it can't see the terrain ahead. So let me tell you what I'm talking about. So let's say on the street, you've got, uh, you're just going into a corner and maybe you're in third gear. Well, all of a sudden the bike says, oh, well, we, we want fuel economy. So we're going to upshift to fourth gear for you right now. Well, what happens is you've lost that steady engine braking going into the corner that you had. And now it upsets the chassis. It upsets your whole situation. It's not dangerous, but it's really frustrating and, and gets on your nerves over time. Let's say you're off-road with the situation. So you might be coming down a hill or coming to some terrain where you're trying to slow down and the bike's maybe in, I don't know, second gear. Uh, and all of a sudden it says, oh, we're going to upshift to third gear, right? Because it can't see the terrain ahead and it just upsets the chassis and also upsets the amount of engine braking you have. And personally, I found this to be one of the biggest downsides and why for a lot of the time, especially off-road, I would run this in the manual shifting mode using the trigger shifters. The next downside of the DCT is the weight and complexity that it adds to the bike. So it's more complex. You've got another oil filter. There's more piping. There's more stuff sticking out the side. So for some people that could be a downside. I don't think it's that big of a deal. So what might be a bigger downside for some of you is the added weight. So the DCT does come with a weight penalty. Sticking this whole big automatic here, oh, I shouldn't say automatic, right? The DCT transmission on the side adds around 20 to 25 pounds, depending on what motorcycle model you're looking at. 20 to 25 pounds might be more noticeable on a lighter weight bike than it is some, on something heavy like a Goldwing. For instance, on the Goldwing, I don't think you're gonna notice or care about that 20 or 25 pounds. 
because the bike's already so heavy to begin with. But if you're starting with a lighter bike, maybe the Africa Twin or bikes lighter than this that they have in their lineup, you might notice that additional weight just a little bit more. So that's a personal thing on whether that's going to be an issue for you. The fifth and final disadvantage that I found with the DCT is that you're going to have to learn or relearn some riding techniques. So the biggest things that people talk about, and there's some good videos out there about this, is like slow speed riding or U-turns and you know turning around slowly just very slow technical riding situations because there's no clutch to feather what you have to do instead to ride at those really low speeds is feed in the throttle against the rear brake so you're using the rear brake to modulate the power so you've got the power feeding in and you're doing your corners but you're using the rear brake to modulate how much drive is going forward on the bike so that's a very very different technique than you're used to with using a clutch to feather that and and modulate that power through your corner or through your low speed situation. So you're gonna to have to learn that as an all new skill. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, but it's just your perspective on whether that's good or bad. It's something new you're gonna to have to learn. If I wanted to do a slow U-turn, how would I do that? So Brett said to put the rear brake on and use the throttle. Oh, that's weird. I don't know if I could get used to that. I feel like, you know, I'm going to tip over here if I'm not careful. Let's try it the other direction. Okay. So, whoa. Yeah, that's weird. Just not having the clutch to... Yeah, I had to put a foot down there. Not having the clutch to give you that slow speed control is very strange. So I know you want me to answer the question, is DCT better or worse than a manual shifting bike? And of course, because this is an honest YouTube channel, there is no answer to that. The answer is that you're gonna to have to evaluate your riding needs and your preferences. So if you're somebody who rides a lot for commuting in urban environments and congested city traffic, the DCT is a game changer and you should definitely get a motorcycle that has it. It will make your life much less tiring and you'll enjoy that urban riding a lot more. If you're more of a sport rider, very sporty, aggressive rider, or you're a very aggressive off-road rider, I think that some of the disadvantages to the system are gonna kind of feel clumsy and get in your way. On the other hand, some more experienced riders might really like the advantages that the DCT brings and are willing to work around the minor disadvantages I mentioned to gain those advantages of the system. So what about me personally? Would I personally buy a bike with a DCT? And the answer is a resounding yes. Yes, I would. And here's why. When I'm riding in traffic, when I'm riding on the freeway or splitting lanes or you know going up to the stoplights, dealing with all those urban environments or commuting or whatever, um, or just daily general riding, the DCT is a huge advantage because it takes a lot of the stress out of riding. It makes for a lot less tiring day. I think for also for touring, for long rides, like I just finished a almost 4,000 mile ride on my 1250 GS Adventure. And I was thinking about, God, how many times did I shift gears during that ride? And when you're really tired, you just kind of get tired of doing that. So I would definitely get the DCT on the bike if it was offered. Even on the Africa Twin, yes. If I was buying a new Africa Twin, I would get the DCT because I can still shift it manually. And when I shift manually, I don't have to mess around trying to get my boot on a shifter like when I'm standing up. And the trigger shifters shift so fast and so smoothly that I think that's a huge advantage. So I really see very little downside. I'm willing to deal with you know one extra little oil filter and 20 pounds of extra weight because it's already a heavy adventure bike to begin with so I would get the system I like it now keep in mind I'm talking about the second generation DCT I know some of the earlier DCT models and on the Africa twin on the thousand cc Africa twin it wasn't as good and it would shift mid corner a new one doesn't do that so I'm talking about the current DCT system with the improvements that they made so personally, I think we should be very grateful to Honda for giving riders another choice because no one else is doing something like this. Again, it's not quite an automatic and it's definitely not a CVT transmission like a scooter has. It's very much different from that. And it sets Honda apart from all the other manufacturers giving riders a new option that's gonna help a lot of people and that even a lot of more experienced riders are gonna really, really enjoy and find benefit from. 
So now's the time when I ask for your feedback. What do you think? Like, have you ridden DCT? Have you not ridden DCT? Would you consider buying one? Or if you did buy one, why did you buy it? And what are the things you like about it and you don't like about it? So let me know your questions, your comments, and we'll have a discussion below in the comments. I always enjoy doing that on these videos. So thanks again for watching. I hope this was informative. Um, please subscribe, please leave a comment, please give the video a thumbs up, and please consider becoming a Patreon supporter. Thanks so much for watching, ride safe, and we'll see you next time control that a clutch gives you know okay. I can control the engine myself and okay. not have to worry about it I'm a little old school I like the, oh, okay. I like to participate with the bike I like oh, okay. switching levers kicking gears sure okay you're old school I just I don't see the point like it's you know if I want to ride a scooter I'll get a scooter mm -hmm. not really I mean I like I like things the traditional way traditional way yeah traditional like a rotary club traditional like a walkman or a traditional sloppy disc Thank <laughs> you.